Valve's got a console surprise for you that you weren't ready for. Tesla decides that they need to get rid of radar in their cars and USB-C will be able to power everything, including that little dumb light bulb inside of my brain. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on this very here interwebs. Let's get started talking about the Steam Pal, my friends. This is an exclusive report coming out of Ars Technica with Valve making a stupid handheld gaming device like portable gaming PC with Ars Technica being able to confirm such as the details, such as that hardware has been in development for some time and there's new hardware related code that's being put into the latest version of Steam kind of pointing to this device. Now, officially Steam Pal isn't the name of this handheld device but it's gonna function similarly to the butthole company's stupid handheld gaming device without the removable Joy-Con controllers. And we even reported on this in a previous episode of Hot News that Gabe Newell, the CEO of Valve, is saying that they're going to be getting into the console section, just not in a way that you were expecting. So the general idea is that Valve is coming out with a handheld gaming device where you're gonna be able to play Steam games on the go. This is a concept that's kind of been taking off amongst the last couple of years, honestly. You have things like the Aya Neo launching, the GPD, the One Netbook. There's been several of these that have come out, Alienware even showing one off at CES at one point. But the latest rumor coming out is that it's not going to be powered by Nvidia. It's not gonna be powered by Intel. It looks like it's gonna to go to the almighty AMD. This makes a lot of sense, especially since AMD's APUs are at the top of the game when it comes to the performance. We actually just reviewed the 5600G over on UFD Tech and it does really good. However, the Steam Pal likely will have the next generation of this using a custom Van Gogh architecture that's gonna have a quad-core CPU with multi-threading, as well as eight compute units based on our DNA too. So it's gonna have Navi graphics, but then also the latest and greatest Zen CPU design on top of that. So it won't be as outdated as the current desktop APUs are because they're still on Vega. Why? The report that came from Reddit, which obviously take this with the biggest grain of salt that you possibly could, saying that the Valve handheld console is coming out Q4 of this year, able to play all your Steam library on it using a custom APU from AMD with a seven to eight inch screen, codenamed Project Jupiter and codenamed Aerith for the APU, and 399 is the price point that they're aiming for. And another well-known leaker confirmed that Aerith is an indeed a codename for Van Gogh, and that's actually one thing that is on AMD's roadmap. So this is a pretty exciting development getting a PC based console and with one of the largest companies who is the distributor of many PC games behind it seems like it could be the right way to go and introduce more competition into the console market it's just in the form of a PC who knew PC was the greatest console all along let me know what you're thinking about the Steam Pal down below in the comments I'll let you know what I think about today's episode sponsor of hot news filthy I think they're great, especially if you're trying to filter all of the air that's coming in and out of your house. Filthy is the way to do it. They sent over one of their washable furnace filters for me, and it has made such a difference in the air quality in my house, especially with Gainesville being one of the most pollen-dense areas in the entire dang country. It's made a huge difference to my son's allergies, my allergies, because it has their patent pending nanofiber technology and it's proudly made 100% in the United States, but also you can wash it and it maintains its efficiency levels over eight washes. And it's also good for a full two years. Plus, it saves you money because in one year in the United States alone, there are enough disposable filters that get tossed out yearly to wrap around the earth 157 times. On average, a filthy washable filter will save you $100 a year as opposed to having to buy a disposable filter every three months. And I know that you guys are like me and you forget to replace it. And you just, you get in there after a while and you're like, oh, oh damn. No wonder things have been bad. Well, with Felty, you just spray it down, you wash it off, you let it dry, and then you just put it back. It's a lot simpler than having to go to the hardware store and going to pick up a new filter. Plus, it saves you money. This is the best way to do it. Big thanks to Felty for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. We'll have links for their washable filters down below. Now, thankfully, I have no shortage of clean air in my house, and hopefully sometime soon, there won't be a shortage of substrates in the chip making game. According to the latest report coming out of DigiTimes, the microchips substrate shortage, as it's so affectionately known, should 
hopefully improved sometime in early 2022 as substrate manufacturers are able to bring into additional capacity for production lines that they've been developing and it could potentially alleviate some of the difficulty that we've been having with getting our hands on chips hopefully but you want to cool those hot chips down well cooler masters got you with the world's thinnest vapor chamber just slightly thicker than a human hair this is being made in partnership with the company murata and it's a 200 micrometer vapor chamber that can fit in thin devices maybe we'll see it in the steam pal probably not i don't think they would but it would be the perfect form factor because it's so thin you could have a vapor chamber cooler in that and it won't take up a lot of bulk especially in an on-the-go handheld device being able to dissipate all of that heat is a great idea I'd like to see innovation from this from companies like cooler master now let me talk about the opposite of innovation stadia is here losing their engineering lead this time my friends they lost their product head previously they lost the head of their game studio and now they're losing their engineering lead who had been part of the Stadia team for 18 months. Gone. Stadia is dead. I, can it survive 2021? Okay, place your bets down below in the comments. Is it dying in 2021 or is it dying 2022? There's no, it's not going later than that. I like, I, I can't, I refuse to believe it. And I refuse to believe my eyes because it's time for the game stunks. Game stop up 15%. Again, two days in a row, huge days, $242. Check out this giant jump that's going on. Game stonks going wild. Exactly. The chart events has changed. Bullish pattern detected. It's shooting up, going straight to the moon. Bring me a $10,000 Game Stonk stock, please. Well, this might be slightly in connection to the idea that GameStop might be launching its own cryptocurrency and NFT platform. GameStop published a message on its own website that they're going to do that and it's gonna have a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain and we'll see if this actually develops, but my guess is that some of the crypto bros got in on the GameStop hype because now it's NFT hype too, which is the greatest hype mankind's ever seen. Let's talk about crypto for a second. Bitcoin up 2%, almost back up to $40,000. Ethereum back up 8%. Dogecoin back up 2%. Green all around, my friends. Money going out the windows if you didn't invest probably have raggards right now but apple doesn't want to have those because they are hiring for somebody with a cryptocurrency background for alternative payments jobs with regards to apple wallets it's possible that they might be bringing in cryptocurrency payments into the apple wallet ecosystem but we'll have to see if this actually makes it out or is this just doing something behind the scenes where they're working on their own thing and tesla's been working on their own thing for a while when it comes to autonomous driving now they're finally taking the leap they're getting rid of radar on their Model 3 and Model Y, they're announcing their transition to Tesla Vision, getting rid of the radar that's kinda on all of the cars that they've made for a while. So starting in May of 2021, both Model 3 and Model Y vehicles built for North America will no longer have radar. However, weirdly enough, the Model S and the Model X will both have it, even though they haven't made a single one of those since December of 2020. This transition, according to Tesla, is a necessary step for their full self-driving program where they're gonna need the neural net trained on full vision and getting rid of radar is just a step in order to get to that. However, the vehicles that are gonna be shipping without radar will have limited features compared to the ones that do have radar, such as auto steer can only do it up to 75 miles an hour and have a longer minimum following distance because it can't see as well. And it will no longer have smart summon and emergency lane departure avoidance enabled at delivery, which is weird because emergency lane departure was never, it didn't use radar because it radar can't see lines on a road that was the vision system already. What? However, people were just like, Elon, what are you doing? Why is this happening? People use radar, radar good. Why you get rid of radar? Elon Musk saying, hey, this is part of us getting to a full self-driving future. It's necessary. It's coming out no later than June and Pure Vision's rolling out within two weeks and full self-driving beta v version 9.0 will be coming out a week later after that, at which point you're gonna get the full self-driving subscription instead of having to pay $10,000 out of pocket for it. But when people were just trying to figure out why are you doing this, essentially, comes down to if you have a conflict between radar and vision system with your neural net which one do you trust according to Elon Musk the vision has been more reliable so just reducing conflicts is very important but this could also be potentially tied to the story that we talked about in previous weeks of hot news that Tesla is sitting on between 10 and 20,000 undelivered vehicles because they are awaiting a crucial part for their vehicles and it's rumored at least that that could be their radar sensors so instead of 
of just waiting for the radar to come in, slapping those into the Model 3 and Model Ys that are awaiting delivery, they will just go ahead and ship it without them and move forward much quicker on the future that they were expecting to go for anyways, because Elon Musk has talked about this for a while. They're just now actually taking the next plunge into that. And they're plunging into the Chinese market completely because Tesla is now going to have a localized car data server in China because of the Chinese government saying that they're not going to allow Tesla vehicles on military bases because of them going back to a remote server, which could be used for spying purposes as well as all of that. So Tesla saying we've established a data center in China to localize data storage and we will continue to add more local data centers. And all data generated from the sales of vehicles in the Chinese mainland market will be stored in China. So just giving more just regional control of what's happening with Chinese vehicles in China and reducing the fears that the Chinese government has over Tesla. And do you have fear of apples? Yeah, you're a doctor, but also you should have fear of Apple because it has a new vulnerability, the Miracle's Flaw in Apple M1. It's a huge problem, all right? It, it's a vulnerability baked into Apple silicon chips and cannot be fixed without a new silicon revision. Apple decided to break the ARM spec by removing a mandatory feature because they figured they never need to use that feature for Mac OS. And now the only way to get rid of it is either for M1 to go away or for, as he says here, you have to run your entire operating system as a virtual machine. It's a problem, okay? You can't do it. You can't run your entire OS as a VM. It's just not gonna work, but also, it's, it's not a big deal at all. And the entire point of this is that it's such a small deal and there are so much easier like vulnerabilities to just go ahead with or things that aren't even vulnerabilities. Like if a nefarious actor got a hold of your M1, this would so not be on their radar for things to do. And the only reason he's disclosing it is because when it comes to disclosures of flaws like this, they all have catchy names like Spectre and Meltdown. His is called Miracles and they're Silver Sparrow, which are all amazing, but just poking fun at how ridiculous InfoSeek clickbait vulnerability reporting has become lately just because it has a flashy website or it makes the news doesn't mean you need to care. So none of this is a problem. It really won't matter. If you have an M1 Mac, there is a vulnerability, but all chips are vulnerable because they're all made by humans who are all flawed and nothing's perfect. All around me are familiar faces. But now MGM is perfect. They've become complete because Amazon now owns them for $8.45 billion. It was in the works for a while. They valued at 6 billion. There were some reports floating around that MGM's only worth 5 billion, so why are you sp overspending on it? But Jeff Bezos really wants that lion, okay? He's gotta tame that. It's probably gonna merge with Amazon Prime. You get all the free MGM movies, James Bond special on Amazon Prime, which means it's now gonna be integrated on Twitch, so you can just watch all of that on Twitch. Heck yeah, I never know multi-billion dollar moves. Are they wise? I, I don't have billions. But now we have Unreal Engine 5, Epic revealing it in early access. You can download it if you want. They're also showing off a demo of what it can do with new features and particle effects and a whole bunch of other rigging systems that they've included. The thing looks flipping amazing, okay? Epic's doing a really great job with Unreal Engine 5 for doing a great job transitioning to electric vehicles, them announcing that they're gonna boost their EV investment by $8 billion, potentially switch to 40% of its global fleet being all electric by 2030, as well as developing an electric Explorer, but not to be overshadowed because there's no shadows on the moon because there's no real light source because it's all done in a Hollywood basement. Don't you listen to the red hot chili peppers? That might have dated me. I like things I grew up with are now old. Anyways, Lockheed Martin and GM are working on an electric moon buggy that's autonomous and it's gonna drive you around on the moon so you can hit golf balls in low gravity. And you can power everything with USB-C because the new USB-C 2.1 certification ups its power delivery from 100 watts up to 240 watts, 48 volts at five amps. You want to power Brett? You just jam one of those USB-Cs into me. And Intel's jamming its way at the top of the charts. New report coming out about the largest chip manufacturers in the entire world. Intel, still number one. Samsung, number two. AMD, pathetic, 11th. Disgusting. It's up from 18th, but it's still not as good. Nvidia's eighth, by the way, much better. Apple, 13th. They used to be 10th. They went down. Sad, sad Apple. Texas Instruments bigger than AMD. Suck that. And suck on the 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti. Nvidia showing off tight. Titanium, I guess, is what's leaking here. Anyways, we're gonna have an announcement of that May 31st at 10 p.m. Pacific time, which means it's 1 a.m. my time, which means I will be asleep. 
So you can catch that hot news the day after that happens. And you can catch all the Zen 4 rumors, all the big things that AMD is developing for their next generation of CPUs in yesterday's episode of Hot News. Go check that out, my friends, and I'll see you tomorrow. Sorry for the singing today. Whoopsie. Thank you.